So Sonoma County is tightening the restrictions on which properties will be eligible for a vacation rental permit, which is definitely putting a lot of people off looking for a vacation rental. But if you are looking, don't give up. If you know where to look, there are still numerous places to buy a wine country property that you can turn into a very profitable vacation rental or just enjoy income from a second home. So yes, there's a moratorium in place. Yes, there are new restrictions, but there are still many great options near places like Sonoma City, Healdsburg, Kenwood, Windsor, and Glen Ellen. And with cities such as Healdsburg, Sonoma, Sebastopol, and other cities such as Windsor and Cloverdale having outright bans, the key to finding a highly profitable vacation rental in wine country is to look around the edges of these highly visited towns. The new limitations around places like Glen Ellen and Kenwood and Healdsburg is, is not necessarily a bad thing because it will make the ones that do exist even more profitable. But where do you look? How do you know if it will qualify? And how much is it likely to cost you? And what's more important, how do you know that when you find one, it will definitely 100% qualify when the rules are always changing and, and the rules are so complex? Well, if you watch the end of this video, I'll share with you the eight places you're most likely to find a great wine country second home that you can also vacation rent. My name is David Hargreaves, one half of the Brewington Hargreaves team, and we're in the top 1% of teams in Sonoma County. And we probably do more vacation rental business than any other realtor in the county. So if you do want to get the latest news on vacation rule changes, then do sign up for my newsletter and I'll, I'll put a link in the description below. Before I talk about the best areas to look, I wanna talk about the six basic rules you need to follow to evaluate any given property. Firstly, it can't be in any city. I mean, again, there are some exceptions, but it's easiest to ignore any property within a city limits. You know, whether it's Sonoma City, Healdsburg City, the town of Windsor, Cloverdale, Sebastopol, Pedley, basically any city you can forget vacation renting. The second thing is the property has to have the correct zoning. And I'll simplify things here, but good zonings to look for are RR, AR, DA and RRD. And then properties with the following zonings you can forget. R1, R2, R3 and LIA. So the third thing you need to look for, the property has to be outside an exclusion zone. There are various exclusion zones around the county, but particularly in the Glen Ellen and Kenwood areas, as well as north and west of the city of Sonoma, and also in the foothills area of Santa Rosa. And some of these zones which are exclusion zones are actually being enlarged as part of the changes in the new ordinance. So definitely need to pay attention to those. The fourth rule is the property can't be in an HOA. Again, there are exceptions here, but I'm just trying to simplify it. So the easiest thing to assume is that if a property is part of an HOA, it won't allow for vacation rentals. The fifth thing you need to think about is, is the property in an area which is going to be capped with the new ordinance? Again, these cap areas, they're not yet cast in stone, but we know, we know where they're all going to be and we also know how to avoid them. So that's definitely another key factor in choosing a great place that can work as a vacation rental. And then the sixth thing to think about is if the property is in the coastal region, then you're good, you can vacation rent it. I mean, this rule is super easy. There are currently no limits for vacation renting in the coastal area, although later this year they are introducing a business license, but that doesn't change eligibility. So now, Having talked about the rules briefly, let's get into talking about the eight different areas where you'll be able to find a qualifying wine country property that you can vacation rent. The areas I'm going to talk about are all outside of any exclusion zones and any proposed cap areas, and are also areas that will feel much more like wine country than Russian River or the coastal area. If you are looking for something in the Russian River, I mean, it, it will still be possible to find something, but it's definitely going to be harder than it was. So. If you are thinking about that area, do contact me on 707 238 2112 and I can talk you through where to look in the Russian River if you're looking for a property in the sort of, you know, 800,000 or less range. So the first place I want to talk about are vacation rental opportunities around the city of Sonoma. So if you are looking for a home which has easy access to the city of Sonoma but feels like wine country, the best areas to look are going to be to the west of Sonoma City and also to the south. So just off Arnold Drive is a great location where there are numerous highly profitable vacation rentals. One of the reasons this is so popular is because, you know, it's easy to get to from San Francisco 
and yet, you know, you've got the city of Sonoma like right on your doorstep. The other area which is a good area to look at is immediately south of Sonoma City or south of Napa Road. There's lots of really great places there. I mean, a lot of these are very high end. And again, because it's close to San Francisco, you know, it's a very popular place, but it's also got great access to Napa Valley as well as all of the wineries in and around Sonoma. So, you know, another great choice. So just to give you an idea of the types of properties you can buy in these places, one example is 1282 Fowler Creek, which is just off Arnold Road. And this is a great example of what you can get in this area for $2 million. This is a remodeled four bed, three bath ranch home on an acre. I mean, it's not got a pool, but it's got a great yard to put a pool in. And given it's just a 10 minute drive to the Sonoma Plaza, it'll definitely perform well as a profitable vacation rental. In this area, it's hard to find a property that doesn't need a lot of work for less than one and a half or even two million dollars. So if you are looking for a vacation rental in this area, you know, that's what you can expect to have to pay. So the second area I want to talk about is around Glen Ellen. Glen Ellen is definitely one of the harder areas to find a vacation rental because there's such a large exclusion zone around it, which is about to get bigger, um, combined with the fact that, you know, the last few years there's been a ban on issuing of new permits in a fire perimeter area. So even with the fire perimeter area, because the exclusion zone is so large, there's definitely not too many options in this area. The best place to look near Glen Lennon is on the, the north side of Warm Springs Road, close, you know, close into town. And then also as you go northwest towards Bennett Valley, as you, you head out of town, is another good place to look. Just thinking of the type of property you can get in this area, there was a great new build house that recently came on the market, 5011 Warm Springs Road, which would be eligible to get a vacation rental permit. So for 2.2 million, you get a three bed, two bath home, 2,300 square feet, with a pool. If it was on the other side of the road, it would actually be in the exclusion zone. So this just shows you how careful you need to be when finding a home that will qualify. The third area I want to talk about is near Kenwood. As you carry on Highway 12 past Glen Ellen, you come to the small town of Kenwood. This is, you know, it's a stunning area, which is definitely quintessential wine country with, you know, acres of vineyards stretching from the road to the hills beyond. In the immediate vicinity of Kenwood, Again, there's an exclusion zone. However, if you look on the north side of Highway 12, there are some amazing vineyard properties. And then as you head towards Oakmont, just on the south side of Highway 12, there are a number of side roads, such as Frey Road, um, where, where you also find some really great properties, which will qualify. The thing to look out for in this area are properties that are just set back from Highway 12, because there are quite a few properties that are you know, super close to the road, and these can be a little bit noisy. So we likely have a listing coming up in this area for a four bed home with a pool on about an acre, which will be listed for about three million. So this gives you an idea of what you can expect to pay in this area. If you want to know more about this listing or, or other listings we've got coming up, just, just get in touch at david at brewingtonhargreaves.com. So the fourth area I want to talk about is Bennett Valley, which is just southwest of Santa Rosa. To be honest, a lot of people from the Bay Area don't really know the Bennett Valley area, as well as some of the other iconic areas I'm talking about in this video. If you are looking for something with a wine country feel, but at a price point nearer 1.5 million, this is definitely an area that's worth looking into further. It's just south of Santa Rosa, but a short drive to Kenwood and Glen Ellen. So you've got access to a lot of the same wineries and restaurants as you do in these places, but at a much more affordable price point. There've been a few properties for sale just off Sonoma Mountain Road on roads like Hidden Acres Road that, that will qualify as a vacation rental at price points between 1.2 and you know maybe 1.6 million for you know a three bed ranch style home. So definitely more affordable in this area. The next area I want to talk about is Mark West Springs and this area is northeast of Santa Rosa. This is another area which is not top of mind when thinking about where to buy a wine country vacation rental but it's definitely worth exploring. This is an area that was badly hit by the Kincaid fire and to be honest over the last few years there has been a moratorium in place preventing people applying for permits in areas and properties within the fire perimeter. But that expired last December. So once this moratorium ends in May, then there could be some really interesting opportunities opening up in, in the Mark West Springs area. While it's obviously devastating how badly this area got impacted by the fires, 
you know, the good thing about this area is that many of the homes are, are new builds and you can get one for, you know, $1.5 million that, you know, can have spectacular views. For example, there is a home that recently came on the market in an area called Larkfield, which was a modern connect home with a pool, you know, amazing views for 1.65 million. A home like this in many of the other areas I've covered off in this video would cost nearer two and a half million dollars. So definitely worth looking at if you were looking at a lower price point. The next area I want to talk about is around the Windsor area. With the town of Windsor putting an outright ban on new vacation rentals moving forward, the, the only real option for a vacation rental is immediately outside of the town limit. And there are a couple of places to look. Firstly, on the west side of Windsor, as you head out on East Side Road, which ultimately connects with West Side Road, you know, there's some interesting areas there where you can get a qualifying home. I mean, many of the homes here are LIA zoned, which as I explained earlier, won't work, but there are definitely RRD and AR zoned homes in this area immediately west of Windsor, which would definitely qualify and, and make profitable vacation rentals given their proximity to Windsor, Healdsburg, and so many great wineries. So the next area I want to talk about is around Healdsburg. With the new ordinance coming to place, buying an eligible vacation rental property around Healdsburg is definitely about to get harder. Again, this isn't necessarily a bad thing because if you do find one or you know you do own a qualifying property, then you know it's just about to get a little bit more valuable. From May, Chiquita Road is likely going to be off limits, as is Posan and Norton Roads on the on the north and northwest of the city of Healdsburg. The best places to look moving forward are going to be on the south side of Healdsburg, around areas like Limerick Lane, or also on the lower part of Chalk Hill Road, but on the west side of Chalk Hill Road, which avoids many of the LIA zone properties that you'll find further up Chalk Hill Road. As an example of a property near Healdsburg that would qualify is one that came on the market recently is 870 Fitchview Lane, which is just on the south side of Healdsburg. And this house, to be honest, is a little unusual looking, but I mean, it's set on an acre, and I do think it could be a pretty good vacation rental if someone spent, you know, an additional 250,000 on it. So for less than 1.5 million, you get a great vacation rental very close to Hillsburg. The other place to consider looking around Hillsburg is Mill Creek Road. So while Mill Creek Road itself is you know, very forested, there are numerous properties that, that do feel like wine country and you definitely get a lot more for your money out here compared to some of the other areas I've talked about around Healdsburg. So the final area I want to talk about is around Sebastopol. So I've definitely saved the best until last. This is by far the easiest place to find a wine country vacation rental. You know, there's no exclusion zones in this area, there's no caps, and a huge number of properties have the right zoning for qualifying for a vacation rental permit. There are too many areas to mention, but I do feel some of the prettiest areas are in places like Grayton Road, Green Valley Road, Sullivan Road, and one of my favorites, Harrison Grade Road. But also extending you know, further northwest to the little town of Grayton, which, which I absolutely love. There are also some amazing places on the north side, um, so towards Olivet Road and, and beyond. In fact, I just recently found a place off market for a client on Olivet Road which had a vineyard, had a pool, had a tennis court, a pool house, a three, main, a three bed main home, and all for 2.7 million. So this debt was a home that definitely checked all the boxes as you know, either a pure play vacation rental or as a second home that qualifies as a vacation rental. The other good thing about areas around Sebastopol are the fact that, you know, touch wood, these areas haven't had any fires in recent history because they're, they're just a bit further west and so it's not quite as hot in these areas as it is certainly on the, on the east side of the county. You wouldn't be watching this video if you hadn't heard about Sonoma County clamping down on vacation rentals. While the new rules do make it harder to buy one for less than a million dollars, there are still lots of great options for buying either a dedicated wine country vacation rental or, or else a second home that will qualify for a permit. So given the profitability is entirely driven by supply and demand, the fact that it's going to be harder to find one will likely be probably be a good thing in the end because it does mean that when you do buy one, it will be more profitable. So if you do own a home that will qualify for a permit, your home is likely now worth a little bit more compared to a similar home that doesn't qualify. If you are looking to either buy or sell a vacation rental in wine country, then please do get in touch. However, I can almost guarantee that something in the rules would have changed since I recorded this video. So 
please do make sure to get in touch and ask me what are the latest rule changes and I can talk you through the latest options. If you like this video, you may enjoy some of my other videos about setting up a vacation rental and also how to start the process of actually looking for a vacation rental. If you did enjoy this video, please hit the like and subscribe. Until the next video, go well.